Yeah, I'm Abigail Seidman, and my mother worked at an abortion clinic in Ohio from when I was 11 to when I was about 17. The staff there frequently wore, you know, Wiccan-style jewelry or clothing in the, you know, clo Wiccan, you know, sort of witchy-style clothing, the Wicca-style jewelry, goddess jewelry, that kind of thing. Most of the clinic workers wore some kind of goddess symbol or Wicca symbolic jewelry, you know, moons and stars kind of things, um, goddesses, um, a labrys, which is a double-headed axe, which is a symbol of lesbianism. That was a common thing that was worn. So um, the jewelry and just the general the general clothing style, you know, that they would wear. It's it's one of those things that I can't really describe it, but you know it if you see it, especially in combination with the jewelry. That sounds like what everyone wore there and what I sort of adopted as a style for a, a bit when I was 12 or so, trying to look like the adults in my life. Traverse City specifically, my family regularly went there. We went there on vacation at least once a year, usually once in the winter and once in the summer. I think that's where my mother first met people from the clinic who encouraged her to work there. I remember meeting some of those type of women and my mother talking to them. And then in the years when my mother was working at the clinic, my, fam my whole family would go up there, but my dad and I would go skiing, hiking, boating, whatever. And my mother would usually, for at least a day or two, disappear. And you know, we don't know what she was doing. She was off with her friends, and I don't know what was going on. I was just doing normal vacation stuff with my dad. It was it was strange. It was it was difficult. I was isolated in a lot of ways from the other kids. We lived in the suburbs of Toledo, Ohio. We lived in a very conservative area. Most people went to church. Most people were you know at election time you'd see mostly Republican yard signs. So we were always odd in that area for being Democrats, for being liberals. For my parents were pretty communist in their outlook, and as my mother got more radical feminist, it got weirder. I was, you know, wasn't allowed to talk to people on the, it was almost like, like being in a cult. There was that same sense of isolation as she got deeper into it. I wasn't allowed to talk on the phone, to have friends, to go to parties. I was definitely not allowed to go to church or youth group or the Christian prayer groups before school or anything else that I was invited to by friends. I was very isolated in a lot of ways until my parents' divorce. We had, you know, we had comprehensive sex ed in school, but they, d they didn't discuss abortion at all. They discussed birth control, and basically they, they misrepresented it as just being completely foolproof. If you use birth control, you won't get pregnant, so they didn't have to discuss what happens during pregnancy or what your choices are for pregnancy because the assumption was you're going to use birth control and not get pregnant. I didn't actually attend college long enough to be influenced very much by anyone, and I was there for slightly less than a full semester, and the choices I made as far as my major actually were kind of designed to protect me from that. My mother wanted me to major in, you know, women's studies or gay studies or something like that, and I chose computer science, so all of my classes were just hard math and science, and there, there's not really any room for ideology. Math, calculus is calculus. It's not a philosophy. When I was very little, under five, my parents went to church. They were actually very active in their church for a time, and I, I loved going to church. I, lo I loved Sunday school. I loved God. I loved singing about God. I, my, um, my grandfather was a very devout Baptist and was always talking about God and Jesus and praying and reading the Bible. So when my mother got involved with all this, she cut off contact with my grandparents. I didn't see him again before he died. But when I was very little, I was aware of God and was very happy. And that was, that was taken away from me piece by piece. And I didn't find it again until I was 30. I wasn't actually aware of it right away. I knew these people dressed differently than, than normal people. I knew there were some different things being talked about. And gradually, we had already moved, as my mother got more and more feminist, we had already moved away from typical religious belief. We didn't go to church after I was five. Um, she took my Bible away when I was 10. And not long after that, we started. she started collecting goddess figures, and she started going to a Buddhist temple sometimes. And so I, gradu I just became aware that this was, rather than just being a fashion choice or just pretty jewelry, I just thought it was pretty jewelry at first. And I wasn't really aware until later that these, you know, that wearing a goddess around your neck had as much significance as the cross I wear now. 
it was open among the people in the group. There was a lot of there were a lot of things that were not talked about outside of the group, and that's part of the reason why I was kept isolated. It's not something you were supposed to discuss with outsiders, particularly Christian people. You're supposed to isolate yourself from them as much as possible because they wouldn't understand. But within the group, things were pretty freely discussed. You had to have had an abortion. That was considered the initiation rite, and you didn't get to learn about certain things or go to any kind of ceremonies until you had had your first abortion. And I didn't have one until I was 18, and I was well away from them and not involved. I moved away in the mid-90s, and my mother moved away in the late 90s. She's still friends with some people who work at the clinic. There are some of the same, same people still there, but I, you know, I, I can't personally say I cut myself off from them and haven't had any contact for over a decade.